Granya Nimali, 12 years old. The year is 1542. She lives in a time where explorers are roaming the world and sea captains trade upon the sea and pirates show up as well. Now her father, Duvdara O'Malley, was the great clan chieftain and highly respected man, a tall man with long black hair pulled into a ponytail. And he was a great leader of his clan and his daughter admired him with every fiber of her body. Duvdara, his Christian name being Owen, was married to Margaret O'Malley, her very elegant mother who ran the roost and took care of things about the clan when her husband was off on the sea trading the goods that the Irish people had to sell and bringing back all kinds of treasures from spices to silks to Spanish wine on uh, his trading journeys. And the other thing the O'Malley's were famous for was that they guarded faithfully the territory right outside Clue Bay, where their castles were. And that was the Atlantic Ocean. So anybody wanting to pass through as traders uh, through their personal waters or use them as fishing trade uh, paid a tax to the O'Malley's. And of course, friends got to pay a little less tax. and. Uh, People like the English, well, they paid a higher tax or they donated much of the merchandise on their ship to the O'Malley causes. <laughs> Rania O'Malley, one day, 12 years old, she waited for her father's ships to come home. She just knew today was the day. She had a big dream in her mind that night and she'd seen the sails rounding the ocean into Clue Bay and she just knew that today was the day after months of travel. Of course, her mother back in the kitchen was yelling, Grania, get in here, finish your oat cakes. There's no way of knowing if your da will be home today. It's just a dream, girl, just a dream. Get in here and you've got chores to do as well. Oh, ma'am, I just know he's coming. I saw him in my dreams and I've got I got a secret, I got a secret surprise I want to share with him and, and you too. Uh, but, but I'm waiting till he gets home. I, I know what's coming. Oh, Bridget, oh, Bridget. Oh, young Grace, she remembered Bridget the goddess that she'd heard of from all the stories of the ancient times and Bridget the Catholic saint as well. For she was a Christian girl raised by the monks and taught to speak both Latin as well as Irish which played out very well in her life later on. Now, when she finally spied him coming around, she said, oh, they're here, they're coming, I told you, Mom, I told you, I told you. And she tucked her big long skirts and ran down to the shore where she'd climb in her own little cura, a little small leather boat, uh, handmade and ready to just take a little girl right out there on the sea. Now, Grace was different. Grania, Grace, we call her both. She learned how to swim, taught herself how to swim, was right there elbow to elbow with all those sailors unloading the ships and they'd tussle her hair and pick her up and throw her around, loving her like a child, like a granddaughter or a daughter. And she was part of them whenever they came home. But this day, as soon as she could get her father away, she hooked her arm in his and ran up the hill to see her mother and he was happy to be home to see his wife. And while mother and father were having a wonderful little reunion, father was away at sea for a long, long time, just holding each other and talking to each other and him bragging about all the things that he'd brought. Grania went behind a big oaken barrel where she had hid her surprise. She pulled on sailor's trues, the pants of a sailor, pulled down her big long skirt, put on an overblouse that was all puffy and billowy like the sailors would wear and made sure she'd found one from one of the sailors nice and small of stature so it fit her just fine at 12 years old. And then she had her bandana which was gonna tie around her hair so she'd really look like a sailor. But first she had a job to do. She picked up a knife she'd carefully sharpened and took her long black braid, chop, 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 
and even any little lengthy parts of her hair she hadn't gotten in the first chop. And Grania Whale, Grania Maul, Grace the Bald, was born that day. She tied her bandana, of course, to keep her mother from the shock all around her hair, and then dashed off and broke up the hug between her mother and father and said, look, Da, I'm ready to go to sea. I'm going to be a sailor next time with you. I'm 12 years old now, old enough to go to sea. I know I can be a sailor. Her father's eyes got wide, looking out of the corner of his wife, whose face was pale as a ghost. Guess it wasn't going to be the homecoming he really <laughs> looked forward to. What is this, said Margaret O'Malley. What, what, what are you talking about, girl? You're not going to sea. The sea is a woman herself. She's jealous of any other woman being on board the sea. The sailors themselves, they call it the devil's ballast, the devil's weight. If a woman should be on board, oh, it's bad luck. They don't ever want to see a woman on board. The sea wants no part of you, girl. Oh no, Dad, you tell her. You tell her how you've taught me about the sea, how to see the sky and read the wind and know just how to take care of the great galley ships so they can tuck away in case a storm comes. You tell her how I know about the sea and the sea's been calling to me. Oh, Dubdara's face is getting pale now too, <coughs> looking at his wife, looking at his daughter, how much he dreamed of his daughter being at sea. Maybe that had somehow come across to her a little too strong. Well, girl, no. No, you're not going. You're not going because if it's not the sea, then it's the men. I won't have my daughter on a sea ship with those men. You put a little liquor in them and they're worthless. And Dovdara's face begins to change. These are his men she's talking about. Oh, no, girl, no, I won't let my daughter near one of those. No, no, they, they tear you asunder is what they do. And pretty soon, now his face was getting red and his eyes mattered in a hornet. He pounded his hand down in the kitchen table and said, not my men. They're wonderful guys. I know they're rough around the edges, but they wouldn't cross me not for a second. And this girl, they love her like a daughter. They cherish her with their life. No way they would hurt her, not for a second. I say she's going. And she did. And months go by, and there is this young girl sailor. You can hardly tell her from any of the men, except that she's, uh, she had some stature to her, but uh, she was a little on the scrawny side. Her favorite thing when they weren't scrubbing away, which she did with all the sailors as hard as any of the men, she'd climb up the mast. She'd hide herself in that crow's nest up above. And she'd fantasize about being the goddess Bridget, or maybe the Morgan turning herself, shape changing into a great crow and diving down and taking part of all the ancient Irish battles. Oh, she loved to play, but she was a good worker too. Now she'd promised her mother one thing, that if any trouble came to the ship, She'd always go below. She'd promised it, sworn in the Bible, her father as well. But one day when trouble did come, when pirates, the O'Malley's could be pirates themselves, but they flew the O'Malley flag. But no, these were the dastardly kind of pirates, the ones only out for blood and money. Their grappling hooks came up around the edge of the ship, and suddenly they were all over the deck like rats. And Grace was way up high. So she was out of harm's way, but she could see below her the great tumult of the fight, all the sailors defending their territory and those pirates wanting to take the ship. Then, as she inched her way down, she saw her father boldly defending himself and anybody behind him, but then out of the distance out with a, a long sharp razor sharp knife came right at his back and that little girl she turned into the morrigan catch her all and flew right out of the sky landing on top of that pirate's back and when her scarf came off and her now growing back long hair flowed over his face he dashed her to the ground saying ah it's the devil's ballast a woman on the sea Come on. Here. And they were like rats again, just leaving the sea. And Grace O'Malley, 
grace the ball, granumal, granuel, save the day for the O'Malley's that day. 